All right, let's get right to it. Let's get it. He's coming off a bye week. Clearly, he's not fully recovered from that high ankle sprain that he suffered in that Thursday night game against the New York Giants. Right. We'll see if he can get some practice time in the remainder of the week, but his status at the very best is up in the air for Sunday night in a game where Dallas defense desperately needs its best defensive player. As because Parsons is Parsons, and we need Parsons to be out here. And, of course, we can go back and forward about should he be a linebacker, should he be an edge rusher. He's a football player. And uh, I don't want to rush him. I think that the Cowboys are going to make it a game day decision. And I don't know if there's enough drugs that they can shoot him up with to get him out there on the field. But if he plays, I think that it will be a good situation for us, For even if it's for limited snaps, right? Uh, I think Parsons bring that type of tenacity to the table. Let me know how you guys feel about that. So the next thing we're going to talk about is the Debo and uh, – Kittle's thing. Let's listen to them, what they had to say. The 49ers, some injury woes of their own. Debo Samuel hospitalized this week with a mild case of the pneumonia. He's been released from the hospital. Kyle Shanahan has said that Samuel will have a chance to play on Sunday night. They'll continue tracking him during the week of practice to see if he can get out there in a week that they will have to get used to being without their other wide receiver, Brandon Ayuk. And Samuel is not the only Niner trying right. to make it back for Sunday night. George Kittle dealing with a sprained foot, and his status is up in the air. The 49ers have said they consider Kittle to be day-to-day. -day. It is a big game. We'll see if he can make it past that foot injury to be out there Sunday night. But both teams look to potentially be a little bit shorthanded in a game that both sides have to have. Cowboys 49ers should be a fun one Sunday night. No doubt. So my thoughts on this, <laughs> a small piece of me want Kittles out there because of what he had did last year with the F Dallas shirt, right? But if Kittles is not there, then I get it. You know, uh, the Niners, they are three and four, by the way. This is a must-win game for them, just like people are saying three and three Cowboys. This is a must-win. This is survival of staying above 500, right? And the race of what the Washington team doing as well as the Eagles, we're in third place right now. And if the season were to end, both of the teams won't be in the playoffs, for the Niners nor the Cowboys. So this is a must-win situation, collectively speaking. So – uh, a little bit of me still want to see the best out of the 49ers, and I want to see the best out of the Cowboys, but I'm taking anything and everything I can get at this moment. You know what I mean? Yeah, but Dak Prescott has struggled significantly yeah. in the Cowboys' last three games against the 49ers, which includes two playoff losses. Among the teams he has faced multiple times over the last five seasons, his total QBR, yeah. touchdown to interception ratio, completion yeah. percentage, and yards per attempt against the Niners, they're all the worst. My goodness. Their last meeting was in week five of last season where San Francisco beat Dallas 42 to 10, as we remember. To Man. make matters worse, yesterday owner Jerry Jones called out the poor play of the Dallas offense this season and head coach Mike McCarthy spoke about the struggling unit moments ago. Well, before uh, we listen to Mike McCarthy and Jerry, uh, I will say this. Man, Dak Prescott versus the 49ers. <laughs> That's his kryptonite. God, dog, you know, if you look back at everything outside of what his rookie year or 2017, Dak been on a on a real, real dangerous slide with the 49ers. 41.6 QBR, terrible, worse, you know. Uh, touchdown to interception ratio, three to six. Ooh, wait, that's bad. And then completion percentage, 58 percentage. That is crazy by the way, and then yards per uh, attempt, basically 5.9, right at 6. Dak, you're going to have to play better versus the 49ers. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what else to say at this moment. I know coaching plays a role in that, but at this time, the shoe that you're going to have to fit, it, it it's on you. If the shoe fit, wear it, right? So at the end of the day, Dak, you're going to have to be the difference maker. Figure out a way that you can get that touchdown to interception ratio down. Figure out ways where you can get that QBR up. How you can get that up? Make calculated risk. Make calculated throws. Run the ball. That all plays in the factors of QBR, by the way. In your completion percentage, take what they can give you. Don't force it. Fred Warner. 
he already knows the psychological warfare. He said that he know the plays before they've been ran. So you, Dak Prescott, got to figure this out. On top of that, run the ball. I think that that can help alleviate some of these numbers here. Even though people may think that you can't run the ball on the Niners, you can if you look back at the tape. That's one of the elements that they've been missing out on as it relates to their defense being on the decline from the previous year. It's something you, you take a you know, really good look at. I mean, obviously the, the run game is very yeah. low and you know, the passing game. Um, so you, you just break it down first and second down. I think clearly that's where we got to be better at, you know, first and second down. And, you know, some of the things that we can definitely do better in that area. All these things about what we're not doing right is not an illustration of our football team. It definitely does not reflect the confidence and belief that we have. So, um, you know, this is a very good team. Um, you know, it's, it's tough to play out there in uh, Sunday night football. So we're really looking forward to going to get this fourth win. It's good to speak it, Mike. It's good to speak it, Mike. We got to let people know you coaching for your life. And you only got a few people that's an advocate for you, bro. Like Nate Newton, as we discovered last night. Shout out to Cowboys and Chill. We had got a chance to speak to Nate Newton about Coach Mike McCarthy. The thing is, we can speak glowingly of it all about you. But your back is against the wall, bro. This is a contract year and a third of the staff. They they don't have a contract a, a little bit over that. They don't have a contract for the 2025 season. So they got to get it out of the mud this season. And we don't have longitudes and latitudes to wait around for anything. And that's just how it goes. That's the writing on the wall. Uh, Marcus, what do you want to see from the Cowboys offense coming off a of bye week with extra time to prepare against the Niners? Yeah, I want to see it. Uh, confidence and belief ain't going to get your ass a win <laughs> or make you play better. You Max. actually got to go do it. And this team with no run game and you become one-dimensional against San Francisco, Bosa will have his way on these edges. This is the only yeah. example this year we have of Dallas having a run game to effectively impact a really good defense, as you see here against the Pittsburgh Steelers, and mitigate some of the pass rush. Because this is the issue that Dallas is in now. Right. They're, they were a team where they try to get leads and play ahead, and I've heard so many people say that, and then let the pass rush unleash, and they can kind of dominate teams in that way. They are no longer that. Right. They have to be a multi-dimensional football team. They got to play slow and physical and rugged games in order to try to keep themselves in it until the fourth quarter and hopefully be able to make enough plays towards the end to win it. But if they can't run the ball and become one-dimensional, Nick Bosa will take over this game, and it'll probably result in some turnovers or some strip fumbles, and it'll be a blowout by San Francisco, even with their injuries. No doubt. Uh, Spears spoke nothing but the gospel and the truth with this. Uh, you got to figure out how to slow this game down. T.O.P. Put T.O.P. in the chat. Because if you don't do that, if you don't control the clock, the clock will control you. We don't have the kind of caliber of talent on this team to give scoop and scores anymore. Takeaways, turnovers, things that normally be given to us. Now, it can happen in this game, right? But the ideology of this happening uh, out of the blue when it's not ha happened before, is, is if you're leaning on that, that that's reaching, right? But you can play sound football, complementary football with running the ball. And... I get it. We're going to talk about the fact that this O line can't block and the running backs can't run. But at some point, A, running for something, killing the clock versus the three and out passing for no gain, at least running for something can kill the clock. Because when you throw the ball, more and more negative things can happen to you if your wide receivers and the talent level is not able to get there. So, what I'm saying collectively, Run the ball. Even if you get two yards in a cloud of dust, you're killing time. You're taking away the clock. So it won't be one of those crazy things, whereas we're talking about 40 points on us, right? At least keep this thing close and tight, and maybe the football world will open up for you as far as turnovers and takeaways because their offense is decimated with some type of injury, right? But their defense, oh, 
their defense, everybody's still healthy to a degree, right? So we just got to figure out ways where we can get into that room of controlling the clock, the T.O.P., and slow this game and stretch this thing all the way out. There's an opportunity here to run the football because the San Francisco 49ers defense is vulnerable on the ground, particularly, and you, you really saw this with Kansas City, when you get them moving horizontally as opposed to north-south. In fact, on runs outside the tackles, the Niners are fifth worst in the entire NFL in the EPA per Fifth worst, you know, outside. So stretch zone runs. I'm hearing news and information that Dalvin Cook getting first team reps in practice, right? First team, not second, not third. So, and he's an outside zone type of runner, right? So if you're giving more and more reps and touches to him, maybe he can hit the element of surprise with fresh legs. That's what we hoping on, right? That's all we got. Put H-O-P in the chat. Law, what do H-O-P means? Hold on. Pain ending. That's what hope means, right? So maybe, just maybe, we can get that into this mix. On top of that, I did hear from Mike McCarthy that he lamented the fact that Rico is going to get more touches. So they're going to go with either this Rico, Dalvin Cook, and Hunter. Now, you know, I don't know whether or not Big Nate tried to say this, but it could be this, that Ezekiel Elliott, e Ezekiel Elijah Elliott may not even be active in this game. Let that sizzle down into your mind and thought processes. That could be a situation. But we have to figure out how we can get this running game going so that we can take care of what I've been saying. T O P play and for Dallas I think the challenge is okay how do you manufacture something I, I, I thought as you saw here Kansas City has some success uh, with Hardman on the end around something could be done similarly with Dallas you've got so many speedy skill players preach me in the backfield try to get those linebackers going side to side they got to get something going on the ground because otherwise I think this this offensive line is going to have a long day against that pass rush. And there is an opportunity here as bad as this run game has looked. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls around the globe, this should be a big game for Cavante Turpin. Let me repeat this again. This should be a big game for Cavante Turpin. I think that he is the only guy that's on this team that can literally take the top off the defense. I think that with his skill set and what he brings to the table, it could be just that right there altogether. The ability to take the top off the defense and being able to do that end around as well, if they are the fifth worst team in that particular light, then why not give it to this guy who really – Last year was the only one that scored a touchdown. He wears number nine and send him on a vertical route. Figure out ways to get Cavante Turpin going, moving, and all of those good things. And just maybe we can get things going. And then that can open up for my guy C.D. Lamb and beyond. And we can do this thing. There's not a lot of tape on Davin Cook. Maybe the element of surprise could be that there, you know. So that's what I'm looking at. And hopefully – the Cowboys do just that, their homework, so that they can get things going, moving, and shaking in the right way. So Mina Combs is right on that particular portion of this conversation, the line of attacking them where they're weak at, knowing that they still have their strength on defense, but we still got to attack them where they're weak at. On top of that, if we can get back to slowing this game down, like what Spears said, and take care of the T.O.P. I'm going to be saying that all this weekend, time of possession. You got to manage that. Well, that's the problem. There's an opportunity, but there's a team in the Dallas Cowboys who isn't put together <laughs> right. in a way where they could take advantage of it. We talked about this not only this week, but last week, the weeks before as hell. In the offseason, we wondered who would be the bell cow of this offense right. from a running game standpoint. And Mina is absolutely correct. You look at the way McCole Hardman was able to take advantage of the San Francisco 49ers on jet sweep. And that could be Cavante Turpin. That's all I'm saying. Jerry Jones, Mike McCarthy. Stephen Jones, all of the Joneses, Willie McClay, all of them, man. Everybody, 
Utilize and use Cavante Turpin. That's all I'm saying on the end of the round. Because if if the uh, Hartman can do it, Turpin can do it. Come on with it. One for a touchdown in the fourth quarter. You look at a guy like Cavante Turpin. We've also seen C.D. Lamb get touches from the backfield on tosses. All of those things should be in the Dallas Cowboy playbook this week versus the San Francisco 49ers. But it's the other side of it, too, when we talk about the pass game. There is no explosion. There is no diversity in who you could get the ball at to who can win one-on-ones. The San Francisco 49ers are a far cry from the defense that has continuously kept this team in the hunt to win NFC championships. But the Dallas Cowboys, who they've absolutely dominated, are a far cry from what they've been the last few years as well. No doubt. So that was a very good measured conversation with uh, that particular panel. I will say this. There's this right here. Any given Sunday. Right. And there is a situation and scenario that this particular team, if they get out of their mind set of we can't do this, we can't do that. Just utilize what you got. If it's a wheel route for Hunter, let him cook. Right. If it's a go route for number nine for your mind let them cook right figure out ways all this particular um bye week we've been getting hit up troy aikman talked about the route running situation right so now this should be fed upon like hey let's go out there and not just talk about with 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 wordplay but let's go out here and talk about it with field play. Come on, man. Look, this particular team can do it. They just got to put it out there on the field. That's what they got to do. They got to say to themselves, look, everybody, mama, uncle, cousin, Tupac, and Biggie climbing out of the grave talking about us. Let's go out here and prove to them on the field that we are, we are pretty good route runners, right? We're explosive with our takes as it relates to going through our reads. We can do this. We can run the ball, even though the offensive line is porous. But let's run behind our best tackle. Let's run behind our best guard. Yeah, right. Let's scheme this thing all the way up. Fight for something, Mike McCarthy. That's all I want to see from Big Mike is do he have the kind of caliber of skill set to fight? And that's what we need to see at the end of the day. Cowboy Nation and departing. All I can tell you is that there is any given Sunday. You got to lace them up, double chin, scrap it up as well, and get things going. Hey, I don't want it if it's given to me. I want to earn it. That's the mindset and the fortitudes of the thoughts that these boys must exhibit and exude. And if they're not ready to do that, then they don't deserve to be playing in the National Football League. Three and three versus the three and four 49ers. I say this all the time, stand tall or not at all. Cowboy Nation, what you got? What's in your heart? This is, this is right here a battle. And this is a must see for TV. Everybody eyeballs on Sunday night will be on the Dallas Cowboys versus the 49ers. And we can't stand them. And I get all of that. But at some point and at some time, you're going to have to show the world you are who you say you are. Let's get it. Cowboy Nation, Dak Prescott, you got to stand tall. Look, let this be your best game. Don't leave off the fact that you got... This going and that going. Just make sure that you increase these numbers right here. QBR, touchdown to interception, completion percentage. Come on, baby. You got it. Stand tall or not at all. Post me your thoughts. Post me your concerns down below. That's been my time. I really thank you all for yours. And remember, you're listening to nothing but the best. Let's go. We up out. Peace. All right.